Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Love, protected, and safe, I hope. Today's sermon from God is on Psalms, Proverbs, Matthew, Nehemiah, 1 Kings, Romans, and Jeremiah. Now let's dive into the book, Walking with God Through Hell by Isaiah Morningstar, and then look at the scriptures concerning this. I was now having sexual relationships openly with a slew of the women, and no longer looked at women as individuals deserving any respect. Although I was kind and courteous to them, I never held them in any kind regards. This inevitably led me into drugs and even more sinning. I had lost all respect for women in every sense of the word, which was until I met Michelle Shearney. Michelle was one of the strippers at Club Infinity, and she was married to an Air Force SP, Special Police. <coughs> they had two beautiful daughters. We were introduced by a fellow Marine who she was having an affair with, but who, like me, treated women with little to no regard. We quickly became fast friends, and she must have been sent from God to me. Both of us were slowly rescuing each other from our darkness in Satan. She eventually stopped stripping and had left her husband as I stopped going to the strip club and my womanizing. But then, but the damage had already taken its toll on her husband. I could not have foreseen what would happen next as a result of our friendship. Psalms 51, 1-19 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt, and cleanse me from my sin, for I am conscious of my transgressions, and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak your sentence and faultless in your judgment. I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. In my sin my mother conceived me, and from my beginning I too was sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part of my heart, you will make me known, no wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Rescue me from blood guiltness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. O Lord, open my lips, that I, my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, through pen, thoroughly penitent penitent. Such, O God, you will not despise. By your favor, do good to Zion. May you rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, in burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. God was bringing Michelle and I back from our wickedness. He allowed us to meet, become friends, and for the sole purpose of having kinship with like-minded people who have a vested interest in making each other better. This would be short-lived, though, as I fell back into sin, as you will soon read. This would split our friendship and also our path with God. My address was 409 Buffalo Street. The SPs affectionately called it Club 409, as they were constantly in transit to and from our barracks. This was due to us causing trouble on and off base, and they were basically our personal chauffeurs, much to their discontent. It was a Friday night, and my fellow Marines were going out drinking as per usual. However, on this night... On this particular night, I stayed in as my drinking had slowed to a crawl. I eventually fell asleep sometime around midnight. I was abruptly awoken around 3 a.m. by pounding and unintelligible yelling at my door. It was one of my Marines, Sierra. He was covered in blood, and his face was swollen beyond recognition. Everyone came out into the hallway to see what the commotion was. I asked him what happened. He explained to me that a few blocks from home, a truck stopped, and a bunch of SPs jumped out asking where I was. He replied, he's at your house effing your wives. What ensued was nothing short of, short of complete and utter barbarism on their part. They beat him mercil mercilessly to the point that he shouldn't have been able to make it home. They told him to tell me that I was next and it would be far worse for me. The next day, I went out headhunting. This was now Satan luring me into a violent season in my life. It took me a few days before I found Michelle's husband as he and his fellow SPs kept themselves in hiding in fear of retaliation but it was inevitable that he would be found. Then on the third day, I found him while walking back from the PX with Brown, a fellow Marine from Club 409. 
We proceeded to threaten him, cornering him up against the building as he, he was now living in. It was at this point his life was in con subject to my control and intense for his life. Shortly thereafter, he and his fellow SPs were reassigned to other bases far away to keep them safe and away from further harm. Fear, intimidation, and violence are just more tactics and ways Satan uses people to keep them in control, in sin, to pull them further from God, and eventually into hell with him. Psalms 11, 4, and 5. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see. His eyelids test the children of men. The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. And his soul hates the malevolent one who loves violence. Proverbs 3.29-35 Do not devise evil against your neighbor who lives securely beside you. Do not quarrel with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious are repulsive to the Lord, but his private counsel is with the upright, those with spiritual integrity and moral courage. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just and righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns the scorners, yet he gives his grace, his undeserved favor, to the humble. Those who give up self-importance, the wise, will inherit honor and glory, but dishonor and shame is conferred on fools. Proverbs 4.14-23 do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not go the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For the wicked cannot sleep unless they do evil, and they are deprived of sleep unless they make someone stumble and fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just, righteous, is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and healing and health to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence, from, from, for from it flow the springs of life. Proverbs 21.7 The violence of the wicked will return to them and drag them away, like fish caught in a net, because they refuse to act with justice. Matthew 11.12 from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault, and violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. Satan's flying monkeys love to use these tactics as well to bring people down. This incident signaled the close of Club 409, as all of us Marines were moved into the rest of the population of the Marines at our central barracks. Nehemiah 1, 8, and 9. Please remember the word which you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful and violate your obligations to me, I will scatter you abroad among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though those of you who have been scattered are in the most remote part of the heavens, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I have chosen for my name to dwell. Just as was commanded to Moses, we were scattered to Club 409. Then I was brought back from my home to a more secure location as I was coming back into alignment with God. During this time, I had gotten into more skirmishes, more of which, most of which, I was instigating. But my time in the Marines was drawing near a close, as my medical discharge was nearing its conclusion. However, Satan still had big plans for me, and he was about to switch gears to keep me. Instead of working sin through me, he was now going to use others close to me in sin to attack me. One of these people was my new roommate, Shay. He was a very troubled Marine. I wasn't happy when I was told I would be his roommate. He had gone AWOL, absent without leave, a couple of times. Like me, he had fallen into Satan's grasp, except he was still deep in it with no way out, it seemed. This inevitably led me to drinking and the strip club again, but this time I did not make it a habit. He ended up meeting a young lady from the Air Force, then started dating her. They were completely lost and infatuated with each other. Satan loves using lust as a way to pull people into sin. As premarital sex is against God's will, sins of the flesh are the easiest to pull people into sin. 1 Kings 11, 1 through 13 Now King Solomon defiantly loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the very, very nations of whom the Lord said to the Israelites, You shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you, for the result will be that they will turn away your hearts to follow their gods. Yet Solomon clung to, to these in love. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away from God. 
For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not completely devoted to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ash Ashtoreth, the fertility goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the whore, detestable idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil things in the sight of the Lord, and did not follow the Lord fully, as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for worshipping Shemash, the horror, detestable idol of Moab, on the hill which is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the horror, detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. And he did the same for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not follow other gods. But he did not observe, remember, obey what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you, and give it to your servant. However, I will not do it in your lifetime for the sake of your father David, but I will tear it out from the hand of your son Rehoboam. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom. I will give one tribe Judah to your son for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So as Solomon had chosen to, to follow other false idols, I had done as well. Although I wasn't worshipping any gods, I had fallen back into alcohol and sleeping around again. This time God was going to unleash against me, tearing me from his kingdom I was living in on earth and back into Satan. Yet God would still not leave nor forsake me. He was correcting me and moving me out of harm's way. As well as this is, as, as move, uh, moving me out of harm's way as well. This is part of his loving kindness. God did not rip me completely from his kingdom, and he still allowed me to see it from a distance so that I may return. 1 Kings 11 14 through 40. Then the Lord stirred up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of royal descent in Edom. For it came about when David was in Edom, and Joab, the commander of the army, had gone up to bury those killed in battle, and had struck down every male in Edom. For Joab and all the army of Israel stayed there six months, until he had killed every male in Edom. That Hadad escaped to Egypt, and he and some Edomites from his father's servants with him, while Hadad was still a little boy. They set out from Median, south of Edom, and came to Paran and took men with them from Paran, and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave young Hadad a house, and ordered food and provisions for him, and gave him land. Hadad found great favor with the Pharaoh, so that he gave Hadad in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Taphines, the queen. The sister of Taphines gave birth to Genubath, Hadad's son, whom Taphines weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genubath was in Pharaoh's house, household, along with the sons of Pharaoh, but when Hadad heard in Egypt that David had died, and that Job, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me leave so, I may, so that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said to him, But what have you lacked with me that you now ask to go to your own country? He replied, Nothing. Nevertheless, you must let me go. God also stirred up another adversary for Solomon, Rezan, the son of Eleda, who had fled from his master, Hadad Bezer, the king of Zobah. Rezan gathered men to himself and became leader of a marauding band after David killed those in Zobah. They went to Damascus and stayed there, and they reigned in Damascus. So Rezan was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, along with the evil that Hadad inflicted. Rezan hated Israel and reigned over Aram, Syria, Jeroboam, Solomon's servant, the son of Nebat, and Ephrathite of Zeradah, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also rebelled against the king. Now this is the reason why he rebelled against the king. Solomon built <coughs> the Milo <coughs> fortification, and he repaired and closed the breach of the city to his father David. The man Jeroboam was a brave warrior, and when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he put him in charge of all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. It came about that at that time when Jeroboam left Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah and the Shilonite met him on the road. Now Ahijah had covered himself with a new cloak, and the two of them were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new cloak which he was wearing and tore it into twelve pieces. He said to Jeroboam, Take ten pieces for yourself, for thus says the Lord, 
the God of Israel, Behold, I am going to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon and give you ten tribes, but he and his descendants shall have one tribe. Benjamin was annexed to Judah. For the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have abandoned me and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Shemash, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the sons of Ammon, and they have not walked in my ways and followed my commandments, doing what is right in my sight and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, as did his father David. However, I will not take the entire kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it to you, ten tribes. Yet to his son I will give one tribe, so that my servant David may have a lamp always before me in Jerusalem, the city where I have chosen to put my name and presence. I will take you, Jeroboam, and you shall reign over whatever your soul desires, and you shall be king over Israel, the ten northern tribes. Then it shall be that if you listen to all that I command you, and walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight, keeping and observing my statutes and my commandments, as my servant David did, then I will be with you and build you an enduring house, as I built for David. And I will give Israel to you. And in this way I will afflict the descendants of David for this, their sin, but not forever. So Solomon attempted to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam set out and escaped to Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and stayed in Egypt until Solomon died. Romans 1, 18-32 For God does not overlook sin, and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who in their wickedness suppress and stifle the truth. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, in their inner consciousness, for God made it evident to them. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through his workmanship, all his creation, the wonderful things that he has made, so that they who fail to believe and trust in him are without excuse and without defense. For even though they knew God as the creator, they did not honor him as God or give thanks for his wondrous creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking, godless with pointless reasonings and silly speculations, and their foolishness, foolish heart was darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory and majesty and excellence of the immortal God for an image, worthless idols in the shape of mortal man, and birds and four-footed animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them, abandoning them to the degrading power of sin, because by choice they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading and vile passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural, a function contrary to nature. And in the same way, also the men turned away from the natural function of the woman, and were consumed with their desire toward one another. Men with men committing shameful acts, and in return receiving in their own bodies the inevitable and appropriate penalty for their wrongdoing. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or consider him worth knowing as their creator, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do things which are improper and repulsive until they were filled, permeated, saturated with every kind of unrighteousness, wicked, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, and mean-spiritedness. They are gossip, spreading rumors. Slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful inventors of new forms of evil, disobedient and disrespectful to parents without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, without pity. Although they knew God's righteous decree and his judgment that those who do such things deserve death, yet they not only do them, but they even enthusiastically approve and tolerate others who practice them. Solomon's enemies were sent against him for his defiance of God. God was about to do the same thing to me for having put things before God. Enemies were put forth against me for my disobedience to his righteous way of living. My roommate, Shea, was about to throw his hat in with the enemy because he both feared and envied what they had. He not only tolerated their plans of deceit, but he joined in becoming an integral part of their sinful plans, as you will read next. During this time, I had been put into a restriction room for two weeks, losing rank for a false allegation of derelict of duty. This meant that I could only be out of the room for barracks work and to eat at the mess hall during the day, as I was now in a separation platoon MOS waiting discharge. During this time, a sergeant had snuck me off base to be the best man at Shay's wedding. Shay's wife had been discharged from the Air Force 
as they went AWOL for a couple of weeks. Unbeknownst to me, she had been living in our room while I was in the restriction room. It was now Sunday night after they were married on that Friday at the courthouse. I was allowed out of the restriction room to go to clean up my room for the weekly CO's commanding officer inspection of marine barracks on Monday mornings. When I arrived at my room, it was in complete shambles. Garbage was strewn everywhere as well as her clothes. She had been living there in my absence, which is a direct violation of the UCMJ, Universal Code of Military Justice. I was not concerned about that though as I, it did not affect me personally. However, what did affect what what did was the despicable condition of our our living quarters. I began to flip out on Shay while I started cleaning up. He stated to me that he would make sure it was taken care of, that I could relax and go back to the restriction room. It was late and I was tired, so with much trepidation I agreed. When I walked out of our room I could not help I could not help but feel as though I was going to somehow pay for this decision. The next morning as I was doing work around the barracks, I saw Shay entering our room. I yelled down to him from the third floor balcony asking him if he had taken care of our room. He never replied. Instead he came out with a couple of bags, then in a taxi with then left in a taxi with his new wife. I now started becoming suspicious feeling sick to my stomach. The more I thought about it, the worse I felt something was amiss. At this point, I asked my sergeant if I could go to my room to obtain my dip so that I could check on the condition of my room. While I was closing in on my door, a corporal came out of it and called me a nasty marine. I told him to F off, but much to my dismay, the room was worse than the previous night. As I entered my room, there were four other marines and the sergeant who snuck me off base for Shay's wedding. It was at this point I knew it was a setup. So I grabbed my dip and left, waiting for the fallout to come. Mind you that I had asked my sergeant a few days prior for two weeks leave to go home to see my son Ethan. I hadn't seen him in six months and it was going to be his birthday. Forty-five minutes later, my barrack sergeant called me to his office, then lit into me. He told me to go to my room and stand outside at POA, position of attention, until he arrived. I complied, then stood at attention for about an hour and a half, when the corporal from earlier turned up to tell me to keep waiting for our sergeant. It would be another two hours before he showed up with the other sergeant from earlier. When he arrived, he told me to go into my room, then ordered me to clean up. As I did, he berated me continuously for 15 to 20 minutes. When he saw that that was not creating a reaction from me, he switched gears. He said, I'm going to take another rank from you. Still, I didn't react. Then he said he was canceling my leave to see my son, and again I was silent. Finally, he, he said that he never that he had the power to cancel my medical discharge, have my MOS changed, which would result in more time away from my son, than have me stationed overseas, whereby never seeing my son until my contract was up, as the training time for school, then shipping overseas for the remainder of my tour of duty, would take up the rest of my enlistment. Now he had my full attention. He had me right where he wanted me. I immediately jumped up off the floor, grabbed a hold of him, and slammed him up against the wall lockers. At this time, the other sergeant grabbed me from behind, then restrained me as he kept out of sight the entire time for this reason. The barrack sergeant then told me I was losing rank, restricted to base for three months, and I had to field day my room every day. This meant cleaning everything in my room, taking everything outside, cleaning it again, then putting it back, all back, and once again cleaning it all. Nevertheless, af after the sergeant finished his dissection of me, I field dayed my room. After I had finished, I sat on my bed thinking about everything that had previously occurred as I thought about all the possible scenarios that could occur the next time I saw him. I concluded on what I must do. If I stayed, I knew that I would get him alone and seriously injure him or worse, kill him, as my family meant everything to me. My second option was to pack my bags and leave, taking my chances of going AWOL. I chose the latter, thus saving both of our lives in the process. Psalms 59.3 Look! They lie in wait for my life. Fierce and powerful men are uniting together to launch an attack against me, not for my wrongdoing, nor for any sin of mine, O Lord. Jeremiah 11:18 and 19. Then the Lord gave me knowledge of their plot, and I knew it. So you, O Lord, revealed their deeds to me. But I was like a gentle and tame lamb brought to the slaughter, and I did not know that they had devised plots and schemes against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living that his name be remembered no longer. Psalms 11.5 The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked, and his soul hates the malevolent one who loves violence. Proverbs 3.30-35 30 
Do not quarrel with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence, and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious are repulsive to the Lord, but his private counsel is with the upright, those with spiritual integrity and moral courage. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just and righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns the scorners, yet he gives his grace, his undeserved favor to the humble, those who give up self-importance. The wise will inherit honor and glory, but dishonor and shame is conferred on fools. Proverbs 24, 1 and 2 Do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their minds plot violence, and their lips talk of trouble for the innocent. Proverbs 1, 2 through 33 To know skillful and godly wisdom is an instruction, to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight, to receive instruction in wise behavior, and the discipline of wise thoughtfulness, righteousness, justice, and integrity, that prudence, good judgment, astute common sense may be given to the naive or inexperienced who are easily misled, and knowledge and discretion, intelligent discernment to the youth. The wise will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his course wisely and lead others to truth. The, to understand a proverb and a figure of speech or an enigma with its interpretation and the words of the wise and their riddles that require reflection, the reverent fear of the Lord that is worship, worshiping him and regarding him as truly awesome is the beginning and the preeminent part of knowledge, its starting point and its essence. But arrogant fools despise skillful and godly wisdom and instruction and self-discipline. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not reject the teaching of your mother. For they are a garland of grace on your head, and chains and ornaments of gold around your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, Come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, the place of the dead. Even the whole, even whole, as those who go down to the pit of death, we will find and take all kinds of precious possessions. We will find our houses, fill our houses with spoils. Throw in your lot with us, they insist. We will all have one money bag in common. My son, do not walk on the road with them. Keep your foot far away from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed blood. Indeed, it is useless to spread the baited net in the sight of any bird, but when these people set a trap for others, they lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own lives and rush to their destruction. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. Greed takes away his lives away the lives of its possessors. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She raises her voice in the markets. She calls out at the head of the noisy streets where large crowds gather. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks her words. How long, O naive ones, you who are easily misled, will you love being simple-minded and undiscerning? How long will scoffers who ridicule and deride delightful in scoffing, how long will fools who obstinately mock truth hate knowledge? If you will turn and pay attention to my rebuke, behold, I, wisdom, will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I, re I called you and you refused to answer, I stretched out my hand and no one has paid attention to my offer. And you treated all my counsel as nothing and would not accept my reprimand. I also will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when your dread and panic come. When your dread and panic come like a storm, and your disaster comes like a whirlwind, when anxiety and distress come upon you as retribution, then they will call upon me, wisdom, but I will not answer. They will seek me eagerly, but they will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, that is, obeying him with reverence and awe-filled respect. They would not accept my counsel, and they spurned all my rebuke. Therefore they shall eat of the fruit of their own wicked way, and be satiated with the penalty of their own devices. For the turning away of the naive will kill them, and the careless ease of self-righteous fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me, wisdom, will live securely and in confident trust, and will be glad, will be at ease, without fear or dread of evil. You can see just how the wicked operate, and what they operate for. Money, power, greed, lust, freedom in this world, to fit in, anything gained in wickedness before God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. You see just how easily Shade defiled himself, his wife, and gave in to the oppressor's will. This is why you must guard your heart and mind to be able to withstand the temptations of evil. This is why God gave me knowledge in, and insight into my situation. This was for me to make the right choice to avoid the pitfalls 
Satan had just set before me to keep me safe, to move me to my next step in his plan for my life and his kingdom. I then called the cab, packed up my things, leaving for the bus station 30 minutes later. I caught a Greyhound bus to Rockford, Illinois. I chose to take the bus instead of a plane as I couldn't track my movements in this manner. On my way home, we stopped in Little Rock, Arkansas to fuel up and pick up more passengers. The bus was quite empty as there were only six other people besides me on the trip there. The moment we pulled into the Greyhound station, we were greeted by the DEA. They instructed us to remain in our seats. I started to worry as I had previously purchased and had on my person a quarter ounce of weed and a modified corn cob pipe. I had just purchased these from Michelle's new boyfriend days before my departure. They were in my carry-on ditty bag, camouflage bag for items during marching, on the seat next to me. Then it happened. Two DEA agents entered the bus with a German Shepherd. My heart started beating out of my chest, so I laid down on the bag and closed my eyes. This was actually the first time I had actually prayed to God. When they got to me, the German Shepherd sat down, indicating to the agents to an illegal substance. The agents asked me if it was my bag. I told them no. It was left there by a previous passenger, and I was using it as a pillow. The agent then took the bag, then abruptly exited the bus. I could now breathe a sigh of relief, but too soon as he re-entered the bus, then escorted me off. Once outside of the bus, he again asked me if the bag was mine, and before I could answer, he showed me a note with my name on it. To my surprise and dismay, Michelle had written me a love letter, as I didn't know that she had. The agent had then asked me for my ID, so I gave him my military ID. I thought to myself, well, this is it. I'm going back to hell. The agent asked me if I was the owner to two exceptionally large suitcases as he pointed, pointed to them. Fortunately, they were not mine, as each one was stuffed to the brim with bricks of weed. When the other agent came back, he asked him if he took care of it. Referring to my weed and pipe, he replied yes. The agent then identified himself as also being a major in the Air Force Reserves, then explained to me the seriousness of my actions. As he handed my bag and ID back to me, he told me he was cutting me a break, and then let me go with a very stern warning. Shortly thereafter, we were able to exit the bus to take a breather. I went inside, to the, term inside the terminal, then called my mom, telling her what had transpired. As we were talking, a loud commotion started behind me. It was the person who came to claim the suitcases filled with weed. He was running for his life with five agents and the German Shepherd in tow. He did not make it far before the dog took him down. The DEA agent tipped his hat to me as he walked calmly by. Yet again, God had showed up to save me as it was time for me to leave Sheol, hell. Psalms 73, 1-28 <coughs> Truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pains in their death. Their body is fat and pampered. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment, like a long, luxurious robe. Their eyes, eye bulges from fatness. They have more than their heart desires. The imaginations of their mind run riot with foolishness. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak loftily with malice. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue swaggers through the earth. Therefore his people return to this place, and waters of abundance offered by the irreverent are blindly drunk by them. They say, How does God know? Is there knowledge of us with the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who always prosper and are at ease in the world. They have increased in wealth. Surely then in vain I have cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long have I been stricken and punished every morning. If I had said, I will say this, and expressed my feelings, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I considered how to understand this, it was too great an effort for me and too painful until I came into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood, for I considered their end. Surely you set the wicked-minded and immoral on slippery places. You cast them down to destruction, how they are destroyed in a moment. They are completely swept away by sudden terrors, like a dream which seems real until one awakens. O oh Lord, when stirred, you observe the wicked, you will despise their image. When my heart was embittered, and I was pierced within, as with the fang of an adder, 
then I was senseless and arrogant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have taken hold of my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to honor and glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the rock and strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful and have abandoned you. But as for me, it is good for me to draw near to God. I have made the Lord God my refuge and placed my trust in him that I may tell of all your works. God is truly good to all who love, obey, and live in his righteous way and will for their life. He heard my prayer and answered it immediately, even though I didn't deserve it. I hadn't given anything to him except for being disobedient and calling him only in distress. However, God used me to show me his grace, loving kindness, the difference between living in sin and his righteousness, and because he was now moving me forward in my next steps in his path for me and his kingdom. I witnessed what happened with the other man who was fleeing for his life as God had set his wrath upon him for his sinful ways, unable to escape God's justice. Just as the scripture tells, I almost stumbled, but God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, caught me, rescued me, and delivered me from my sin. It would be many years before I truly found God, though. Never forget, God will never leave nor forsake you. Victory is yours through God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and no weapons formed against you will ever prosper. Remember, God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, the angels, and I love you all without question or reservation. May God's love, peace, grace, blessings, joy, mercy, understanding, compassion, caring, kindness, patience, wisdom, protection, guidance, glory, goodness, corrections, truth and trust, favor and anointing, faithfulness and steadfastness, forgiveness and salvation, strength, endurance, clarity, courage, calm in every situation, knowledge, and everything good of them be with you, always guiding you through. Have a blessed day in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love you all. Have it, and I will see you later.